So after a week in which Wednesday beat West Brom, table toppers at Hillsborough and then got a hard battle but ugly point down at Bristol City, Wednesday travelled to Coventry hoping to make it seven points out of nine. My first ever away match at Coventry when I was a kid. Um, a science teacher at school, we were a Coventry fan, and it build up to game, and, you know, a bit of banter. And then, you know, there were six or seven Wednesday fans in our class, and he said, well, do, you, do you fancy it, lads? And I went, yeah. So he says, oh, I'll get some tickets. So we stayed behind after school, and uh, he went, don't worry, I'll take us down at school minibus. So that, well, that, that probably wouldn't happen now, would it? Maybe rightly so. Uh, first away game, Highfield Road with that old sort of corrugated looking roof on the side. That's what I do remember. Steward went with me and I got a can of coke. So he profited me and he said, You can't take that in, son, dangerous weapon, you know. I'm about four foot nine and weigh about seven and a half stone. And anyway, I opened it and sucked it all in one and then chucked it in the bin, you know, that prove a point. So that's my main memory of my first away game. Full of gas, heartburn. Nil nil. Yeah. Anyway, back to yesterday's game at Coventry. Coventry City, a 4 2 3 1. Wilson in goal. A back four of Van Ewick. Van Ewick? I sound like I'm doing a bad Jonathan Ross impression. Thomas, Kitching, and Bidwell make up the rest of their back four. Sheaf and Eccles in the holding positions. An attacking midfield three of Mason Clark, Jack Radoni and Hadji Wright, with Thomas Asante at centre forward. As for the Elves, five changes from Danny Rull. 3 4 3 with Beadle in goal. Valerie, Bernard and Fameo as the back three. Midfield four of Valentin, Charles, Bannon and Max Lowe. And a change in all three attacking positions with Gasama, J Lo and Ingleson coming in up front. Five changes from Wednesday there. A the couple of them enforced on Danny Rull. Liam Palmer and Olaf Kabaski picked up knocks. They've had scans. It's not as bad as they first thought, but not enough that they were going to be risking Coventry match. Other changes, a little bit surprising. I'm not surprised he'll come to that. Josh Windass dropped out. No mention of an injury there. Obviously, I think the inference is it's personal issues, which obviously I'm not going to speculate about. But I think what was surprising about that was who came in for him, Jedi Gasama. Not really had a sniff of late, you know, he's been really on the periphery of things and after Masaba scored last week I thought he might have been the obvious choice to come in there. Jamal Lowe comes in up front. Again, not, not really been happening for Ugbo, so I could understand that, but I did think Smithy's been doing quite well coming off the bench and, and looking quite good. His old up play were good the other week. And of course, he's got a few assists, and with a team that's not scoring a lot of goals, so them assists are vital. Perhaps the biggest surprise, there was Ingleson coming in on left for Kibaski. Now, not surprised to see him mentioned, because he's been in and around, but I, when I saw the, the names listed, I thought, oh, Ingleson's probably going to sit in midfield with Bannon and Charles, and it'd probably be a 3 5 2. Um, but no, he started up on that left hand side, uh, and to an extent, I thought he was quite effective. It was a positive start from Wednesday. I mean, Coventry, a team we played four times last season. I think we were sick of the sight of each other, weren't we, by the end? But they'd, they'd got the measure of us last season. So I was really pleased. It, it was a positive start from Wednesday. Um, I think they had a little bit more of the ball, you know, that home side, you'd expect that. But but I thought it was, Wednesday got a level of assurance about the play, you know. I didn't do a review because I didn't watch it live, the Bristol City game, but I have since watched it back. And that was a very scratchy performance, you know, the, the passing were all over the show and it was a well-earned battling draw in the end. But in terms of players having a bit of an off day, there were a lot out there, you know, it's, it was a collective attitude that sort of got them through. Well, against Coventry, I thought we looked quite assured on ball, I thought we used ball quite well. Um, and I never really felt that threatened by Coventry in them, them opening exchanges. In fact, Gassama, who was coming on the right hand side, like I said, maybe a little bit of a surprise, looked really lively and he there was a spell in that first half especially when he was just winning free kick after free kick after free kick um, and they were picking up a few yellow cards with it. 
Of course, we go behind, and that's frustrating because I thought we I thought we were playing well. I didn't think we looked under any particular pressure, and it was their I would say their first meaningful attack. Coventry had, like I said, they had plenty of ball, but not really worried us. It's a chip ball down pitch. Their lad controls it in turns, and it they've just got into a pocket of space. They've just played it past our pressing into that midfield area. He runs on. Charles has a bit of a shove on him, and it. it it's one of those, in it, you know. He don't bring him down and, and take a yellow card for the team. So it's like, oh, free shot. If he brings him down there where he was, you know, it's probably free kick. If they score from that, then it's bloody hell Wednesday. Getting cheap free kicks away in dangerous areas. So to an extent, you can't win on that score. But Wednesday opened up really, really cheaply. They'll be disappointed with that. Could once it became clear that Charles weren't going to be able to get a tackle in because of angle he was at, can Fameo get out and close him down a bit quicker because he's clearly going to have shot. He's not really got much else on. And then third part of goal, Beadle. Does he get to it? On another weekend, he probably tips that round post. I think there's a slight miss it with shot. And I think if you ask their lad, Rodoni, I think it was, I think he'd tell you, yeah, I've hit that with my ankle. And I think probably nine times out of ten, that, that drags a bit wider. But as it is, the drag on it, I think it takes it away from Beadle. There's another little factor which it bounces as well on way in, which I think takes it further into the corner. And I'm not making excuses for goalkeeper because I think he probably should get his fingertips to it. But there's a, a low sun right in his eyes, and I'm just thinking, you know, Get one of them 1950s American baseball caps with foot-long peak, you know. I mean, is he a bit unsighted with that? I don't know. I suspect him and goalkeeping coaches will look at that in week and see if he, he might have done better. But all the way through, from the the press being evaded, the free space in midfield, the defence not getting out, and the keeper being a bit flat-footed, it's a terrible goal for Wednesday all ends up. Which, as I said, is a shame because I thought we looked in the game. I really thought we looked in the game, you know, having having plenty of ball. Coventry had probably had their best five minutes spell before the goal and probably the five minutes after. Um, it was a shame. The good thing is, after their goal, Wednesday didn't. Oh, here we go. Do you know what I mean? Which is the easy thing to do. You've been playing. You've been played quite well. You were a goal behind. Oh God, everything's against us. But they didn't. They they got back into it. Heads were up, you know, shoulders were up, they were up for it. Um, and actually, as they, they half started wearing it on, rather than, you know, Coventry coming to try and get a second, Wednesday took the ascendancy for, after their goal. Um, and as I said, the, a fluttering of free kicks, referees having to confetti yellow cards around a bit. Although as a referee would not send anyone off all season, which obviously will come to its second half as well, but... A stray elbow in Ingleson's face, which another referee, you might have seen a red for that, but he, you know, what I will say is the referee was even-handed today, you know, he, he didn't want to send anybody off, he didn't want to, but it, I thought he was even-handed both ways, lots of yellows all over the show. Wednesday had a few corners, throw-ins, that's, that's where Ingleson, I think, did, did do well. Um, sometimes his touch can be a bit heavy, but... What he did give us out on that side of the pitch, it gives us a, a bit more of a physical presence, you know, Masaba, Kasama, Kabaske, not the biggest units, you know, they're a bit rangy, but he's a, he's a unit, he's, he's hard to knock off ball, Ingleson. That gave us an out ball for Beadley, he, he was using that, because he's, he's a powerful lad, he can hold it up in there. His throwings are a weapon, but I was also pleased he took a couple of the, the corners. And one of the things we complain about as Wednesday fans is our floaty corners. You know, we float him in and it gives opposition defence and keeper all the time in the world to judge our cut ball and get in position to attack it. And he gets some real whip on his delivery from them corners, Ingleson. So I was really impressed with that, actually. As I said, Wednesday, far from letting goal get to him, they didn't. They started pressing on a little bit more and Coventry for their part and it's... Talk about it every week. As soon as you get a goal, you've got something to defend. You just find dropping off, you know. And sometimes you don't realise you're dropping off. You'll just have a look at your line and you're like, okay, now lads, we're three yards deeper than we were five minutes ago. Do you know what I mean? So that can happen. They dropped off a little bit. We were we were getting into them. 
and we were building up a, an head of steam and my only worry was that half time was going to come at a bad time for us which in a way it did uh, and, and sort of destroyed momentum because we got loads of momentum going towards half time and I was just like I wish there were another 10 minute do you know what I mean as it was Wednesday did get back in the game um, and as I talked about last week with Wednesday we're playing a more mixed style now you know so Beadle knocks it long Valerie ends it on Jamal Low does really well actually because he's, he's can't, he doesn't rush he's got it up here low just stands, waits, and then he knocks a nice little pass into Gasama's path just for him to get that strike. It's a wonderful strike, touches it, I don't ball all the way, leathers it in. I mean, at first I couldn't tell which post it had gone in at, and their keeper, so it went down in a funny angle, which didn't help. Leathers it in. But yeah, lovely, calm, measured ball from Lowe. Reminded me of that Pele pass. So that brings us into half time and as I said I, I wish there'd been another 10 minutes of this half because Wednesday were really turning screw and, and, and starting to dominate that 5-10 minutes before half time and whistle did come at a bad time as you've suddenly got that 15 minute break everyone sat down or whatever you. and it's a chance for managers to get stuck into them and I think judging by the start of the second half Robbins probably did get stuck into them Second half, I think they've had a bit of a rocket at half-time Coventry because they come out after their break and they really went for jugular. I think they probably had three or four corners in the first five minutes at half. You know, Wednesday, were backs to wall. They had, one of their lads had an overhead kick, you know, Valerie, uh, uh, low, sorry, headed it up. Not much else he could do because he was sort of right underneath it, did the right thing, but dropped down there, lad has overhead kick, um, several corners, everybody from Wednesday were battling manfully. Um, we probably summed up by the fact that a one bit of cross goes in box and who's there? Leaping like a salmon in six yard box to clear the lines, Barry Bannon. I mean, he's about as big as me. Leapt up there. Boom. But that shows the, the collective team spirit towards defending, and which we saw in Bristol game, saw again yesterday against Coventry, everybody getting stuck in. Yeah. But they were turning the screw on Wednesday. Had a little spell where we were sort of struggling to keep hold up ball, struggling to hold it up. Um, and like I said, for I don't know, a good, I would say six or seven minutes, which doesn't sound long, but in the scheme of a football match, is a long time. They were really chucking it at us, chucking kitchen sinkers. Um, and Wednesday were really having to weather the storm in there. They had a cross from right hand side. It was a lovely low cross. Anybody sticks a toe out, it's probably back at net. And such such an angle on it, this low cross, that as it evaded everybody, Beadle actually had to go down it and get an hand to it because it looked like it might be sneaking in. Um, so they were really piling pressure on you, know, and it sort of... It was a bit nail-biting, to be honest with you. They were really, really coming at us. And like I said, that, that half-time had just come at a terrible time for Wednesday because before the break, we were all over them. After the break, they were all over us. Again, they, they break that left hand side. Lad just sneaks it, but he's just about to pull trigger. You, you can see leg coming back. Bannon comes in out of nowhere. Fantastic block. But at the same time, he did that for Mayo, was sliding across as well. And there's, that, there's always that art sort of wrenching moment when when you see two defensive players converging on a strike and in box, you're like, oh God, don't get referee a decision to make here. But perfectly executed tackle from Bannon. But they were really turning the screw. A lad got away on the inside left channel. He'd got two brilliant options and he took neither of them. He'd got two lads right back stick, ready to attack six yard box. If he just gets foot round back of Wednesday's defence with that ball there, tappings. He got a lad coming over his shoulder on overlap. If he, if he nudges a little ball down line for him to get on, he can drill it across again, probably a goal. In end. He sees headlines, scuffs a shot wide at sort of far post, and that was a get out of jail for Wednesday. I think probably the biggest one, they get, one of their lads had a free header, and I think he was so free, I think it caught him off guard because he literally he didn't have to move, he didn't have to like move, make a little dart and lose his man or pretend he's not bothered and then come in. He's literally just stood there, ball comes straight to him, clear as anything, and he doesn't even have to jump, he just sort of goes. Whoop. It's top at bar, and it's only after the event I think he realised how much time he'd got. 
as I said, Wednesday have been struggling to get a foothold in game. Danny makes some changes. But one thing that did start to turn the tide was um, Paul Valentin. Now, apparently, yes, I do with anniversary of Cisco leaving club, I think. Um, and it was a terrible time for Wednesday. Attritional football. I mean, sometimes match would be on and you, th- you were thinking, Jesus, aren't there any reruns of going for gold on or something instead? Because it was it was awful to watch. But I've got to give him credit. He did bring some good players in. He did. And Valentin's one of them. He's coming at right wing back today. Gets up and down. He's busy in his defensive work. But what he did against Coventry, especially in that spell when we were under a lot of pressure, it's only started just getting the ball and just going on runs. And what that does, when Wednesday were heading lines clear, they're kicking it clear, they were just going back to their men. When he got ball, he just sets off on a run. Just buys your defence time, just for that little breather. And, right, OK, let's get line out, let's squeeze up a little bit. And he, he did that several times. Um, if he'd just got a better delivery, well, if he'd got a better delivery, he'd probably not be playing for us, would he? But he were dragging us up, Peach. That, that was really good play from him, and that helped just turn that momentum from all Coventry pressure and made the game a bit more even. And that's the second half. The game then enters a sort of... We call it the middle stage of the second half. It suddenly becomes end-to-end. Both teams going for it. And I think you've got to be fair to both managers here, you know, Robbins and, and Danny Roll, that 1-1, tight game. You've both had a really good spell. But then you're both near bottom end at table, not in best positions. You're, you're on for a point. Some managers are then thinking, OK, let's just calm it down a bit. Let's just... No, deft. Let's not lose. Let's not lose. But fair, both managers, now let's go and win it. So then it becomes an absolute ding-dong for, for about 20 minutes. It's in their box one minute, our box next minute, and it will just end-to-end stuff. Quite nervy watch as a, as a Wednesday fan, and I'm sure as a Coventry fan. If you were a neutral at home, you know, just sat down with a brilliant TV control, oh, what matches on it, and, and that were on. Happy days, brilliant game for a neutral, but end-to-end and a, a bit nerve-wracking. Really good block. Valentin gets on, um, drives into box. Their lad makes a fantastic block. Uh, sort of falls on ball, that bomb blast here, I went box. I think it's Adam in. A bit of a shout of ball actually, but you know, as Wednesday fans, I think we've stopped even appealing for them now, haven't we? You know, I don't think we've had one since 1867. Positive changes from Danny. Obviously, Smithy comes on, Marvin Johnson, and, it, and he's brought Masaba and Ugbo on as well. So, like I say, it's 1-1. We've been really, really under the cosh, and there's no part of him thinking we'll sit in here and dig it out. He's thinking, let's go and try and win this game. And if we lose the game, let's lose it, try and win it. As I said, a bit of a ding dong then. I've got to be honest, you know, because you have to be about these things. The last 10 minutes, that needle starts going back towards them again. And we're really, really coming under pressure. The chucking ball in box, there's a. There's a bit of a melee, I think it's a Santi in there with Fameo when they're having a bit of a wrestle which goes on after balls cleared. In fact, Fameo gets his shirt ripped off his back. And that's one of them funny things, isn't it? Isn't it? Commentators, you know, there's a big melee in goal mouth, there's like 18 players in there or whatever. Oh, awful scenes here, nobody wants to see this. Yeah, we do. Everybody loves it. It's one of them little parts of football. It's almost like a break from playing to a little a little interlude. Go on, smack him. Awful scenes. No, they're not. Everybody loves it. Give it. Players shake hands, get a book in a piece. It's like, like I said, a little intermission in play and everybody's up out of their seats. Part of football. Um, so there's a melee there. And then there's what will probably be the main talking point of the game, actually, which is Charles goes in. With a bit of a lunge tackle, I think it's Bidwell. Is he lucky? I think he'd got some control over himself. That's, that's always the issue with him. Has he got any control of himself? I think he got some control of himself. But he's a bit high. Should he have been sent off? I've seen him given. I'll put it this way. If referee had flashed a red, I'd have probably gone, no, yeah. You know, I wouldn't have been surprised at all to see a red. As it was, because we've seen that bit of a, an elbow on Ingleson in first half and he's not got red out there, I, I, I'd got my suspicions he might just yellow him on this trick because clearly, as I said, his record, he doesn't send many people off. 
and I think he's one of them that is a little bit yeah, it is a rough and tumble game, you know, people do people do get stuck in, so yellow card. Wouldn't have been surprised to see a red, but like I said, with this referee, I think he wanted to keep everybody on park. Do you know what I mean? Because Coventry fans will be up in arms about it because Charles then goes on to get the winner. And as I said, it's Coventry are piling on. And if we're honest about it as Wednesday fans, we were hanging on like a punch drum boxer, you know. Wednesday supporters were like corner men stood there, cut ring bell, ring bell, because we were up, you know, they were really chucking it at us. And then a loose pass, as is so often the case. A loose pass from one of their lads. He leaves he leaves his mate an hospital ball. Masaba comes in, nicks it off his toe, and then he's got one throw. I mean, at one time it'd have been take it to a corner flag. He's got one throw, streaks straight down the middle of the pitch, absolutely sets off like a greyhound out at traps. Brilliant support run from Charles. I, I suspect he's actually trying to take a couple of defenders away with him, like, oh, somebody keep an eye on him and open it up for Massar. But as it is, defenders all converge on Massar, but they think he's going to have shot, and as soon as they all come into him, lovely little slip ball into Charles. I did think for a second, is he offside there? You know, it looked, it looked close, fractionally close. And I'll tell you what, it's a great finish. He's really he has a touch. He has a, he has a little touch, touch. And his side foot's it in. And it last minute of a game, that's a really impressive calmness and assurance he's shown there. Because we've all seen it pass. A lot of people have took that first time, blazed it over. And once you've done so much defensive work in this game, especially in the that 15 minutes up to end at match, I don't think a lot of midfield players met that run. You know, Masaba sets off. And if you're a, an old in midfield player, especially, and you've just been under Kosh for 15 minutes, I think a lot just let him run off. And think, right, we go and do whatever you're going to do, waste time or whatever, or try and get a shot away. I'm going to sit and cover. But he doesn't. He's like, now I can get up there. I can make a man for him. Uh, really impressive. In fact, he's just a super, super player, full stop. Um, yeah. In a different time and place, would have afforded a player like him. Anyway, so. Great goal for Wednesday. Was a draw a fair result? Or was Wednesday's win a fair result? Overall, I think a draw probably would have been fair. You know, the first half thought we looked comfortable. Then we had a little five, ten minute spell before break. We were on top, got our, our equaliser. The second half started, it were all Coventry. Then it was an absolute end to end ding dong like a tennis rally. And then the last. 10 15 minutes, I'd said it was all Coventry again. So, overall, I think a draw would have been a fair result. I'd have probably taken a draw, but sometimes you gamble, you roll the dice, and you get your rewards. And I'm sure there's probably one or two Coventry fans today thinking we've been a bit lucky, but I think you earn your luck, don't you, by gambling. And Danny's gambled, he's made positive changes, and uh, his substitute with that saving run up pitch has, has won the game for him. Man of the match, well there's only one man of the match, but I want to talk about the other runners and riders because it was a team performance with a lot of hard work in there. Again, Bernard, brilliant at back because we came under relentless pressure beginning at second half and end at second half. For Mayo again, that's a, another really good solid game from him. And it's building blocks, like I said he's had a tough start I think to his Wednesday career, but the last three or four games... Stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, Gassama, I mean, he's been on the periphery the last few weeks, you know, not really had a sniff. I don't think anybody's really been talking about him and saying, oh, we need this kid back in starting 11. But he's coming today and he's showed it, an intelligence where he's been running with ball. He's won us loads of free kicks, absolutely loads of free kicks. He scored a lovely goal. Um, and he looked full of beans, he looked full of confidence. And sometimes when you've been out at side, especially when you're a young lad, you can have, you know, you can have monk on a bit and I'm like, ah, I should be in. But it's coming today and look really good. Ingleson, not his best game, but like I said, I was impressed. He gives us a different outlet when he's at left of that 
front three. I think that's something just for Danny to remember because there will be some games when that's needed. He holds ball up well. He's strong, physical, bit of an aerial presence as well coming in round back stick. The throwing's an absolute weapon and like I said, I really like his corners. The other one I want to mention is Paul Valentin because when we were, as I mentioned in review, when we were under the cosh, we had a spell. We couldn't keep holding it. Every time we cleared it, it was just going back to their men. You know, we were just there were times we were booting it anyway. And I've got no problem with old-fashioned defending and, and get it out and get it out. But we weren't keeping hold of it, and we were coming under more pressure. And he just made a couple of absolute lung-busting runs, which just took that pressure off back four. Let us get up pitch and just calm things down a bit. And I would say it was not a coincidence that when Coventry were really hammering his after break. And then that needle started going back in game, started getting a lot more even. It was when Valentin started, again, making three or four of those really marauding runs and, and getting us up there and just letting us have a little spell. Um, he's had a terrific game. Absolutely brilliant, Paul Valentin, today. But man of the match, though, is Shea Charles. Now, I know there's an argument. Maybe he shouldn't have been on pitch to score a winner, but... Even if he'd gone off in 75th minute, he still had a superb game. Head and shoulders above anyone else on park for me. He's he's not cocky, he's not arrogant, but he plays with a self-belief and an assurance, which for his age is unbelievable. He can do everything. Win ball, give it, head, tackle. Maybe not that tackle, but... He's strong, he's not Nesh, he's got no fear to his play. He scored that goal today, his first goal in professional football. Delighted for him to get that at Wednesday. And the truth is, he's too good, he's too good for this division. He really is. He's head and shoulders, he's going to be some player. He's so young. So he's my man of the match, I'm delighted for him, but there's... It also brings a bit of melancholy with me because he's the sort of player that's well beyond our scope these days to sign. Um, he's the most effective loan signing for years. I'm trying to think the last time we had a loan player that made that sort of impact. Maybe, I think, uh, Ben Marshall, Connor Wickham. You're having to go back a long time to let a long player's made such a, a huge impact like that. Absolutely fantastic. And it, it's changed the dynamic of the team, bringing him in. Absolutely superb today. But, as I said, superb within a really good team performance. Uh, brilliant result for Wednesday. Seven points from nine going into this needless international break. I'm getting sick of them. To be honest with you, I, I love tournament football and I'll sit and watch qualifiers, but these league, whatever, get they're just friendlies, aren't they? However they dress it up, it's, that's annoyed me. And I hope it doesn't affect Wednesday because, including QPR and, and Luton, despite the, the drop points, I think we've had a really good month. I think we've played some really good stuff. We're looking more like a team. We've slightly changed the way that we play. It's a, a much more mixed game. If we have to go long, we go long. If we have to clear lines and boot it off at stand, roof, we'll boot it off at stand, you know, and we're really starting to look like a, a, a proper unit now. I think he's like the final piece in Jigsaw in their midfield, been absolutely super. Um, and I just hope that we can keep that momentum going when we come back in a fortnight. I mean, a fortnight around the football. Um, I hope we can carry on that. We've got some tough games after that. Maybe one or two players actually will benefit from a break. I think Bannon, I thought he was really good yesterday. Um, again, probably just overshadowed because of colossal performance from Charles. But he looked out on his feet to end. You know, he, he ran his socks off yesterday. So maybe one or two of them will benefit from a break and a, a chance to get them lads who's got to knock back up to speed. But I'd have preferred it if we'd got another game Saturday. I really would. Um, but anyway, all in all, good weekend for Wednesday. Climbing up that table now, that looks a lot more healthy. So, enjoy your, enjoy your break. Uh, see you later. <laughs>